Thank you, Tracy, and uh, thank you all for taking the time to uh, attend today. Hopefully we have a presentation popping up there sometime soon. Great. I'm not very good at singing and dancing, so. Uh, Northern Graphite is a company that's based in Ottawa, Canada. We have about 65 million shares outstanding. We consider that we have the best new graphite project. I'm sure everybody says that, so my job today is to convince you why it might actually be true in uh, our case. Uh, it starts with location. If any of you want to do a site visit, you can jump in the car and you'd be there in four and a half hours. It's between North Bay and Ottawa off the Trans-Canada Highway. It has a reasonable capital cost. It has a realistic production target relative to the size of the market. It is the highest percentage of the more valuable large flake production. It has the lowest marketing risk of any new project. It has the highest margin and the best economics. Uh, it's not a junior exploration story. We have a full feasibility study and we have our major environmental permit. So the next step is $100 million Canadian and building a mine. And we have developed a uh, patent pending um, battery material technology, which I will tell you a little more about, which converts that graphite mine concentrate or helps convert it into the anode material for lithium ion batteries. Why should you be interested in graphite? As I mentioned earlier, graphite is the anode material in lithium ion batteries. That's a $20 billion a year business that's growing at over 20% a year. That chart is historical. That's not a forecast. And uh, as usual, the best investment advice comes from just looking around you. And we all know the proliferation of uh, personal devices, cameras, cell phones, laptops, all of that market is driven by lithium ion batteries. Uh, this is lithium ion battery manufacturing capacity that's in the pipeline. Uh, it's set to quadruple by 2021. Uh, if that happens, we're adding 300 gigawatt hours of production capacity. And you can see at the bottom, that would require a doubling of um, annual graphite production. So even if these uh, plants uh, were only to operate at 20 or 30 or 40 percent of capacity uh, due to lower than expected growth in EVs, you would still need multiple new graphite mines. Uh, this is a little bit of a comparison. Uh, the three main uh, battery minerals are graphite, lithium, and cobalt, obviously. And the difference in the graphite market, you can see it's quite a bit bigger than the other two. And in terms of battery demand, it still hasn't got to where the other two are yet. That's one of the reasons that the graphite price has not performed as well, nearly as well, as lithium and cobalt. But the interesting story is that if you add 100 gigawatt hours of battery manufacturing capacity or demand, you're looking at 160% increase in, uh, in graphite demand. So there's much greater leverage there than there is in the other two minerals. And that leverage comes from two factors that um, uh, people uh, don't often consider. You talk about how much lithium you need and how much graphite you need in a battery. Well, if you were to build a graphite mine producing 100,000 tons a year, only about 70% of that, it varies by deposit, it could be 50, it could be 80, is battery quality. So let's say 70% of that 100 is battery quality. You turn it into anode material the yield is only 40 or 50 percent. So you add 100,000 tons of flake graphite uh, capacity, which is a couple new mines, you're only adding 30,000 tons of anode material production. So you can't really believe in the uh, electric vehicle and lithium ion battery story without believing in the graphite story. We all, all know what's already happened to lithium and cobalt prices. Graphite is somewhat of a different story. I started the company back about here, and because of batteries, electric vehicles, and the, uh, and, and the forecasts, and uh, I was way too early. 
but in the early days I was spectacularly right for the wrong reason. Uh, we financed the company privately at 17 and a half cents and uh, we went public at 50 cents and the stock went to about 340. But that was all due to the commodity super cycle, steel demand and the growth in China. And uh, our day in the sun didn't last too long because when the Chinese economy slowed down, all of the steel related uh, commodities, iron ore, coal and graphite uh, crashed. And that peak was not uh, long enough to, um, for any new graphite mines to be built. And uh, that, uh, that is the graphite price chart, but that also looks very much like our share price. So we've had three or four years of sideways to down action, waiting uh, for the steel industry to recover and waiting for the battery industry to get big enough that it becomes the driver of the price like it already has for lithium and, uh, and uh, cobalt. And I'm happy to report that uh, at the end of 2017, the graphite price went up 30 or 40 percent from a very uh, low base, mind you. But uh, hopefully that is the start of the same trend that we've seen with the other uh, battery minerals. Uh, graphite is very similar to rare earth in, rare earth in that uh, a high percentage of annual uh, production comes from China. And also 100% of the natural anode material, almost 100% that is produced, comes from China as well. And the opportunity in, is twofold. Uh, firstly, the large flake production in China is declining because the traditional uh, Shandong mining areas uh, those mines are getting older, deeper, and depleted, and also that's a relatively well-developed area, so the environmental police are a lot more diligent there than they are in other parts of the country. And mining is transitioning, has transitioned to Heilongjiang province in the north, and uh, those mines are lower quality. They produce more uh, small flake, which is used to make the, uh, the uh, anode material for batteries. So this is kind of where we come in because we are a uh, large flake deposit and actually the margins and the profitability there is much higher than here. So we definitely need new sources of Western production uh, because we are highly dependent on China uh, and for people that are concerned about the green aspects of the, uh, of the products that they are using. And another point I made earlier is that uh, the battery minerals are very small specialty markets. The automobile market is huge. The annual new car market is about 100 million a year. And uh, if only 1% of those cars were EVs, we would need about 100,000 tons of flake graphite to make the batteries for that many um, cars. Uh, a Tesla, for example, could have up to 150 kilograms of graphite in the batteries. Um, again, it just depends on size. A leaf might be half of that or a volt. Uh, that's a substantial amount of uh, material. 400,000 Tesla Model 3s that have been ordered, that's 60,000 tons of flake graphite on their own. Governments have announced a cumulative target of 17.5 million EVs on the road by 2020. I think that's highly optimistic, but the point is if we only get 20 or 30 percent of the way there, uh, multiple new graphite mines are required to supply uh, the material for that many batteries. So on a macro level, I think the key takeaways for investors are that uh, steel demand is recovering with the worldwide uh, economies. Uh, the lithium ion battery growth has largely started with the small devices. Things like electric vehicles, grid storage, eventually the replacement of lead starter batteries, all those things are in their infancy. There's a lot of runway left for lithium ion battery growth. The replacement technology for lithium ion batteries has not been identified yet. There are many, many candidates out there. You can't open the paper these days without seeing another one. But I would just remind you that lithium ion batteries went commercial in 1993. They didn't get widespread uh, acceptance until the early 2000s and we're still working out the bugs. 
So the replacement technology for lithium-ion batteries is not where uh, they were in 1993 yet. Uh, because of this situation, both the US and the EU have declared graphite a supply critical mineral. There's an immediate opportunity for more large and extra large flake uh, production for industrial markets because Chinese production is declining and a longer term opportunity for the smaller flake for the lithium ion battery market. Switching from that to our project, um, as I said, it's about four and a half hours from here between North Bay and Ottawa. Those of you that are familiar with that area, it's between um, Deep River and uh, Mattawa, five hours from the Port of Montreal, towns close enough for workers, North Bay and Sudbury are major uh, mining supply centers, and we have access to natural gas from the Trans-Canada Pipeline, which is almost unheard of in the mining business. Uh, the mining side is very straightforward. This is a long section through the deposit, very flat lying right at the surface, low waste to ore ratio, uh, conventional drill blast truck operation. And the processing side is straightforward as well. Uh, nothing, um, nothing funky like you'd get in the rare earth uh, space sometimes. Uh, this is conventional flotation processing as you'd find in base metal mines and some gold mines. Uh, we're developing the de deposit in a two-phase approach. The first one is covered by the feasibility study. Uh, we'd be producing about 20,000 tons a year. Capital cost just over 100 million Canadian. In the current market, the price is about almost $1,700 US. Operating costs uh, a little over 600. So it still has a very good margin, even though uh, we're at um, a low level in the graphite price cycle. And then we have 70 years of measured and indicated resources. We've got lots of room to expand. This is a doubling of production after three or four years. Um, we will expand the mine as the market grows. We think it's more prudent to take that approach, start small, and then uh, expand. Um, our mine closure plan has been approved, which is the major environmental permit we need in Ontario. So if we are successful in raising $100 million this year, we are in position to start construction in the first part of 2019, and we would be in commercial production in 2020. Uh, a quick bit of uh, comparative analysis here. The 650,000 ton a year market is not one uniform market. We can break it down by flake size. Uh, purity is also a factor. But the key point is the larger flake sizes are in shortage, highest price. Smaller flake sizes are what the Chinese produce. They're in surplus. If you look at our flake size distribution, it's heavily weighted at the top end, whereas a typical project would start at 50,000 because that's the only way the economics make sense and it's heavily weighted towards the bottom end. We would get an average price of 1,600 for that basket. That one would be less than $1,000. So a big competitive advantage for us. Uh, if you look at all of the other variables that go into the equation, graphite grades range from two to 30% for typical projects. You can see we are at the lower end of the range but we have the best economics for three reasons. One is the basket price, which I just mentioned. The second is that our operating cost per ton of ore is orders of magnitude lower than everybody else's for a number of efficiency reasons, which I can explain to you later um, if anybody wants to go into the details as I'm running out of time here. Uh, that leads to a margin which is double everybody else's and the capital cost is about half. So this is a very nice project, very low marketing risk to start out in the, uh, in the graphite business. Um, all of these feasibility numbers are based on producing run of mine graphite uh, concentrates. There are a number of value added markets. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll just talk about this one here. Um, we have filed a patent for purification technology, which represents an alternative to the approach that the Chinese use, which is one of the reasons that 100% of the anode material comes from China, is purified with hydrofluoric acid. The co-inventors on that patent are three uh, people from Hatch Engineering, a major international engineering company who developed this process uh, with us. 
and uh, we will be doing a pilot plant test of that uh, process uh, in the coming months. 65 million shares outstanding, about 4 million in cash. Uh, we're kind of proud of the fact that uh, we've got a full feasibility study in our major environmental permit and only have 65 million shares outstanding. Uh, the shares have been fluctuating between 30 and 40 cents Canadian, so down around a 20, 25 million um, market cap. And uh, that's the financing plan, about 10 million in equipment leasing, 40 million in debt. We're going to need about 35 million in equity, and we're not going to do that until the graphite price is a little higher and we have a strategic partner, and that will help us manage the dilution a little better. I'll skip over the board side since I'm pretty well out of time here and just sum it up by saying graphite is a commodity with a very attractive supply demand picture. It's one way of playing the EV lithium ion battery game and getting it at a relatively low valuation. We have an advanced stage project in a good jurisdiction, good economics, unique large flake deposit, a patent pending purification technology for value added products and an attractive um, share structure.